Hi everybody, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're happy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know. That was God. Um, I don't know. Um, hope you're having a good day. Uh, hope you're having a blessed day. Uh, yeah, that kind of threw me off. Um, doing well hope you're having a blessed day yeah okay um and uh may the joy of the lord strengthen you in jesus name okay this video was so unplanned he just had me add um to another one um and all day today i've had this in my spirit and i knew he wanted me to share so here i am um and so I did share in one of the videos recently that um, I'm reading Genesis, right? And I'm learning a lot and God's speaking a lot, okay? And this is one of the things that Holy Spirit is like, you should share this. Uh, you need to share this. And so I'm like, okay, God, let's share this. But like, it has me, like, I'm still kind of processing it. And he has me like, like, I'm still kind of freaking out about it. Um, yeah, like, I don't know. I feel such a joy with this message. I don't know so this is gonna bless many of you many of you okay so in Genesis we're gonna talk about Abraham okay <laughs> oh my goodness I'm so sorry I'm so sorry well I'm not sorry cuz it's laughter right but um, anyways excuse me if I just burst out laughing but um, we're going to talk about Abraham, okay? And um, here, um, I read about a story that I had heard, right? I had heard about this. So when I read it, it was it was familiar to me, right? Um, I read it. So um, it was, um, this is in genesis 12 so it's in the same chapter that god calls abraham where he's like go right uh to a land i will show you he doesn't even really tell him where or what but um he tells him to go and so abraham goes okay he takes his wife his nephew lot um yeah and so they end up um in egypt right um and i'm telling you and i'm sure you guys know this story because i've heard of it uh but i had never read it you know um <clears throat> they end up in egypt and so abraham decides to lie okay mind you god does not pick the, like this is a big emphasis that god does not pick perfect people okay um, and so Abraham lied to Pharaoh and said that his wife was actually his sister's. So Sarai at the time, God still hadn't changed her name to Sarah. So it's Sarai, um, his wife Sarai. And he told the Pharaoh that this is his sister, right? Um, and so the Pharaoh takes her as his wife okay um and and he treats her very well and he pays abraham for her okay because that was like the custom back then he gives uh the pharaoh gives him sheep cattle male and female donkeys male and female slaves and camels but adonai inflicted great plagues on Pharaoh and his household because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So here his name is still Abram, not Abraham. Abram's wife. Pharaoh called Abram and said, what is this that you have done to me? Why didn't you tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister so that I took her to be my own wife? So here I'm like to they like consummate that stuff because that's what it sounds like he took her to be his own wife now therefore here is your wife take her and go away 
So Pharaoh gave orders concerning him to his men, and they sent him on his way with his wife and everything he had. So he basically was like, get away. You know, God was inflicting stuff on him and his household. Like everything was going wrong. Um, and then um, he found out like this is, I don't know if God told him. Like, it's not clear here, but what I'm going to share next, it, it might be clear. Um, yeah, and so he's like, take her, take her, and they, they didn't, like, harm them or anything. They're just, like, basically just leave, okay? So I knew of that story. And then, so that's chapter 12. Then we get to chapter 20. <laughs> We get to chapter 20 and um, here um, Abraham traveled from there toward the Negev and lived between Kadesh and Shur while living as an alien in Gurar. Abraham, he was already Abraham here, was saying of Sarah, names have been changed, okay? Um, his wife she is my sister he does it again <laughs> he does it again and I'm like oh my goodness wait this happened twice and I'm not done with Genesis so I don't know if he does it again but I don't think so um, oh my goodness so he does it again again okay so uh, Abimelech, which was a king, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream one night and said to him, You are about to die because of the woman you have taken, since she is someone's wife. Now Abimelech had not come near her, so he said, so here they make it clear that there was no consummation, even though he did take her as his wife, like there's, there, there was no consummation, but the first time it sounds like, yeah, I mean, yeah, but, um, where was I, so... Now, Abimelech had not come near her, so he said, Lord, will you kill even an upright nation? Didn't he himself say to me, she is my sister? And even she herself said, he is my brother. In doing this, my heart has been pure and my hands innocent. God said to him in the dream, yes, I know that in doing this, your heart has been pure and I too have kept you from sinning against me. This is why I didn't let you touch her. Therefore, return the man's wife to him now. He is a prophet and he will pray for you so that you will live. But if you don't return her, know that you will certainly die. You and all who belong to you. So Abimelech got up early in the morning, called all his servants and told them these things. And the men became very afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? How have I sinned against you to cause you to bring on me and my kingdom a great sin? You have done things to me that are just not done. Abimelech went on asking Abraham, whatever could have caused you to do such a thing? And honestly, as I'm reading, I'm thinking the same thing. Okay. Abraham replied, it was because I thought there could not possibly be any fear of God in this place. So they will kill me in order to get my wife. But she actually is also my sister, the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And so she became my wife. So they had, um, 
the same dad but different moms so they were like half siblings um even god had me leave my father's house i told her do me this favor wherever we go say about me he is my brother so abimelech took sheep cattle male and female slaves and gave them to abraham and he returned to him sarah his wife and he said look my country lies before you live where you like and he gave him money thousand pieces of silver um yeah to sarah he said here i have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver that will allay the suspicions of everyone who is with you before everyone you are cleared so her like she was redeemed like vindicated and honored right like don't worry like what happened like it's like you're still like in good standing right abraham prayed to god and god healed abimelech and his wife and slave girls so that they could have children for adonai had made every woman in abimelech's household infertile on account of sarah abraham's wife so, okay, there's a lot here that I've been just like, like I told you, like I'm still kind of like processing it myself because he just keeps downloading and revealing and I'm just like, okay, so Abraham kind of did things that he shouldn't have, right? But yet he's considered as like the father of many nations and he's known so much for his faith because he obeyed anytime god told him to do something he did it now in between getting direction from god he kind of did some things you know um but even when he did things that weren't right and here the king is saying my heart is pure i was deceived they told me that they were brother and sister right and God said, yes, you're right. Like your heart is pure, but he was still on Abraham's side. He had a covenant with Abraham, not Abimelech, which speaks volumes. I'm like, God, this is the gospel. This is the gospel in Genesis, in the beginning. He made a covenant with Abraham abraham and he was holding up his end that even when he did wrong he was right <laughs> i'm like wow wow that even when he did wrong like god covered him still god was on his side okay so if you are in covenant with god if you are walking in obedience, it doesn't matter what anybody says, what anybody does. It doesn't even matter what you say or what you do. The mistakes you've done that even if you, not even if, it's like we all have made mistakes, right? But if you are walking in obedience, that whenever he says to do something, to say something and you do do it that outweighs everything it's him being in relationship with you it, it, it's covenant it's covenant okay and he makes every wrong right okay he that's romans 8 28 he works all things together for who for the good of those who love him and are called abraham was called according to his purpose god's purpose so if you're out there doing your own will even if your heart is pure but if you come up with a child of god god is going to favor his child okay god is going to favor his child and even more so a prophet he called abraham a prophet he's like he's my prophet and your land won't be healed until he prays for you. Like Abraham was in the wrong here. 
but he gave Abraham all the leverage, all the leverage and cursed the other party. They were all infertile. Where does it say? For God, for Adonai had made every woman in Abimelech's household infertile on account of Sarah, Abraham's wife. And it wasn't until Abraham prayed, as God instructed him to, to pray, that everybody was healed. And I'm just like, I could just meditate on this for so long. I have been, <laughs> I have been, and I'm like, wow, wow. And then he downloaded something that like, uh, for those of you who are um, in your marriage season and there could be a third person involved. I was like, God, you didn't speak to Abraham or Sarah. You spoke to the third party. The first time he spoke or somehow to, it doesn't say clearly, but he, Pharaoh found out how it doesn't say, but the way he did it in chapter 20, I'm assuming that God reached out to Pharaoh and told him like, this is somebody's wife. You need to give her back. And then in a dream, he came to Abimelech and told him, she's somebody's wife. Don't touch her. I haven't, I'm not letting you touch her. And so I feel like, and, and, and like I'm saying, he didn't talk to Sarah or Abraham. He talked to the third party. So to the third party, to the counterfeits, to whoever, is involved coming in between uh, a covenant of God, a union that God has brought together of his servants, of his servants. Even if they've messed up, God is taking their side and he's going to speak. Wow, oh, I feel that. He's going to speak to the third party, whoever it may be. It may be a counterfeit, it may be just somebody meddling, it may, I don't know, whoever it is. To, he's going to speak to the third party and curse them until they do right, until they let that other person go. And then the, the other person, the God's servant, is going to pray for them so that they will be healed and then they will be healed. Was that like just like chapter 20? Yeah. They're going to be filled with the fear of God. There's probably been like sickness, sickness happening or infertility. And until they do right, until they do right, then the curse will be lifted. And this is all God's doing, right? It's like God, God does things and he brings on judgment, not because he's this horrible God, but because all of that stuff, first it's his loving kindness. And this is in Romans. I'll put scripture in the description box. Um, his loving kindness is supposed to lead people to repentance. And if his loving kindness doesn't lead you to repentance, then it turns to judgment. You store up judgment for yourself. And it's that judgment that's supposed to, the, the ultimate goal is repentance. Repent. Turn from your evil ways turn from your wicked ways and you will obtain mercy okay 
But then there's people that are like, oh, I just have to weather the storm, weather this judgment, and they feel somehow that they don't need to repent. And it's like, that's not going to lift up. The judgment's not going to lift up until you repent. And God will do what he needs to do. Maybe sometimes people have to hit rock bottom to turn to the Lord, to repent, to seek his face, to humble yourself, you know. But here God is about to speak to people to get out of the way. Get out of the way that doesn't belong to you, that's not yours. And they have to. And they're probably already cursed. They're probably already experiencing some sort of stuff happening with them and their bodies, um, infertility, their, their fruitfulness, right? And, and God is going to say, let them go. They're, they're, they belong to somebody else. Yeah. And yeah, I'm just like, wow, God is so for his children. God is so for the obedient child. He's for his children. Even when they do wrong, but because they are in covenant with him. You're out there serving, doing the will. That's Romans 8, 28. You love him, so you're serving him. You were called. And if you are called and walking uh, his calling out, doing his will, it doesn't matter what mistakes you do in between, like, um, orders, right? In between him giving you instruction, um... You're, like literally it's it's that verse that he takes our sin and he casts it to the depths of the sea and he doesn't remember it no more and that it'll be as far as the east is from the west and I see that here in Genesis before Jesus before the crucifixion before the the empty tomb the resurrection and I see that here like Genesis chapter 20 it's like so loud and I'm like wow 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 so yeah God is about to do some things God is stepping in he's interfering he's making things right um yeah and his love wow his mercy like He's a good father. So good father. And he is a man of his word. If you are in covenant with him, you are covered even from his judgment. If you're out there doing his will, everything he has asked of you, and you do it, you are covered. You are covered. It's amazing. I'm still going to be meditating on this. <laughs> it just speaks so loudly to me. Um, yeah. So that's it for this one. This was so unexpected. But he was like, share. Share it. So I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm going to do what you say. Um, yeah. So I hope this blessed you guys. I hope this blessed somebody. Um, yeah. Um, I'll put the scripture in the description box and if you're led to sow, you may do so. God bless you. Bye.